I'm going to be giving an update on the exporting from the product library application. To put this in context, these product libraries can all exchange product information with each other using the specifiers properties information exchange format and or using data services. So exchange formats are easy for people to understand. You get a file, you import it, you can export the same file back and you can give it to somebody else and they can import it. So that's fairly straightforward. Then you'll be able to export that information to an asset information model, which means that you've got to restructure it so that it can slot in without any editing. Now this is our company product library database. And what we've done is we've made some of those suppliers and some of those products that those suppliers have accessible from a public side. That means you don't have to log in. You can follow my steps if you want to try this out yourself. So the URL for that is products.activeplan.com. So we'll go to the suppliers and we've made five suppliers viewable here. There are two boiler manufacturers. There's uh, one product in Waterloo Air Products, which is um, mechanical ventilation fittings. Uh, Daikin, which is uh, packaged air handling units. And Ideal Standards, which is um, sanitary fittings. So we'll just do the complex one, which is the, uh, the boiler. We put this in about 2005, so we've had this data a long time. So we've got our product manufacturers details there and you'll notice that the application allows us to also put a geolocation for address and it also allows us to put in multiple addresses there's only one address that we've got for Hovel and we'll click on product products and products can be organized into catalogs but make it simple and the structure that we have for products is that they then have product models so some of the products that you'll see have multiple variations and in this particular instance there's only one variation which is one product model so we go to product models because it's the product model that you select and put into a project so we go to that ultra gas and the product itself is linked to a template and then the template says what sort of attribute information is required so that's been filled in there and it means that you can also have attribute information that's relevant at the top level, at the product level, and then that's outputted when you output a product model. But then there are attributes that are specific only to the product model. So you see that those are different there. Well, let's go straight to export. And we've got some options here, which I'll go through in a minute. But if we just clicked the spy export, which is a subset of Kobe, that's going to generate a spreadsheet and if I just open up that spreadsheet we'll have a look through the sort of information that has been populated. So this is all running live, I've not cut this video at all. And in here we've got the contact sheet which includes the supplier but also any people who've edited any data. We've got one entry in the type because we've outputted just one model and then we've got in here we've got some maintenance tasks and in the, one of those maintenance tasks there's a series of equipment required so those are then contained in the resources tab we've got some documents that are associated to the product model to the product so that's the directory structure in which those files are expected to be they are the files and then we've got a description of what those files actually mean and lastly we've got the attribute table filled in and you'll notice down at the bottom there we've also got attributes to extend the information about the company and also about individual users so that company has got a geolocation uh, longitude and latitude as degrees decimal and also an easting uh, and northing from the Ordin for Ordnance Survey, and they're linked back to the supplier's address. So we'll just close that down. And if we just clicked the SIBC uh, product data sheet format export, 
and then just opened up that. So this is using the template that the product's against. So this is not a template that has been produced by SIBC, but the layout is in a SIBC format, a SIBC product data sheet format. And this is a very quick and easy way then to for product manufacturers to provide that data sheet should they should be should a company ask them to provide data sheets and then there's the zip file so if we just click the zip file and I'll open up that zip file as well in my folders and you'll see that that's got a um, folder structure with documents Hovel Limited and that mirrors what is in the Kobe spreadsheet or the spy spreadsheet so what does this mean here well on a project I wouldn't say ultra gas 125 as a designer engineer I would have put boiler type a and the default there is going to Omniclass well we're in the UK so we're going to use Uniclass 2015 and if there was more than one address so there might be several addresses around the world then I would pick the address that's relevant for me and then I just click that to output the spreadsheet again and you'll notice that the spreadsheet name has been altered so it now says spy boiler type A Hovel ultra gas and then there's nothing changed in contacts, but under type, it's now got a reference name, boiler type A. And if I go along to job, that says boiler type A as well. Nothing changes in resource because resource links to job. Uh, documents, same thing again, now relate to boiler type A. And lastly, attributes, they all relate to boiler type A. So everything's been altered specifically so that I can get that straight into my asset information model. Right, that's about it really. The there's there's a lot more to come, but that's the progress report on where we are. Thanks very much for watching.